Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of the Revolutionary Communist Party. So today is a very exciting day for two reasons. First of all, this is the first time, I think, in a while that we have a video episode of Marxist Voice, which is very exciting. So yeah, hello to our uh, our viewers at home and our listeners on the podcast as well. And it's also exciting because we're joined by Fiona Lali, who is the National Campaigns Coordinator uh, for the Revolutionary Communist Party, and has been getting a lot of media attention recently for her appearance uh, on GB News uh, for debating the former Tory minister and rabid reactionary Suella Braverman on the question of the, the Palestine encampments. Uh, as well as yeah, an appearance on Al Jazeera and, uh, and and so on. So yeah, thanks very much for joining us, Fiona, on on the podcast. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, good. Happy to be here. Yeah, and uh, have you found all of this? Uh, yeah, all of this attention that we've been getting towards the party and and so on. Yeah, it's a it's a good thing, and I think that yeah, it just shows that there's been a total vacuum uh, in the media about what is actually happening, the truth of the matter in Palestine. And I think it's just satisfying for people to mm. see someone. Um, say the truth and also say it to their faces. I think yeah, that's definitely. why it's... Uh, and I think it's definitely struck a chord, as you say. It's went viral on social media. I think collectively this uh, these clips have probably gotten millions of uh, views across the world, in fact. Yeah. Uh, I saw it was recently covered in a, a Ghanaian uh, news outlet and other <laughs> various countries around the world. So yeah, it's, it's really gone viral, yeah. uh, which I'm sure will be good for the party and for the international uh, as well. Um, but yeah, it's also, I think, caught the attention. It's definitely in the minds of uh, some members of the establishment as well, because uh, yesterday we had the um, the minister for leveling up, I believe, because you're not doing a very good job. <laughs> uh, Michael Gove uh, come out on, uh, on, on BBC News uh, to give a statement about uh, the rise of extremism and specifically the rise of uh, anti-Semitism uh, in Britain. And he pointed the finger particularly at uh, left-wing groups like the Revolutionary Communist Party, who he says... Uh, are fermenting anti-Semitism and uh, undermining British democracy and yeah, essentially promoting uh, hate uh, and violence. And at the same time as well, you've also got um, Labour's uh, Lord Walney, or to use his more uh, common name, uh, John Woodcock, <laughs> who's issued uh, a Commons report into restricting the right of uh, extremist groups, as he calls them, to protest. He's called for yeah these groups to um, you know groups to pay uh, towards the cost of policing demonstrations and so on. People have kind of quipped that it's uh, pay as you go uh, activism, and this kind of all comes at the same time, really. But yeah, what do you make of all of this? Uh, yeah, yeah, this furore that's been taking place. Yeah, well, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, Michael Gove, that speech that he gave, it wasn't a, a personal speech. It was a speech on behalf of the government. Mm. Gove is the attack dog for the government at the mm -hmm. moment. And actually, I would say the speech comes from a position of weakness, right? Mm. The Tories are looking at the, the encampments, yes, but the general mood in society around Palestine and seeing how that represents something a bit more fundamental. Mm -hmm. Which is that, I mean, look, Gove himself, I mean, this guy's been in the government for the last 14 years. He's been overseeing the complete decimation of living standards in the mm, UK. Education system as well. Yeah. Teachers hate him famously. <laughs> he's, a, he's a hated man, yeah. as, are, as are the rest of them, all of the Tories. And so, I mean, first of all, we have to say, obviously, and everyone knows this, um, the accusation of anti-Semitism is being used just trying to distract. It's a, it's a complete smokescreen for them to distract from what's actually happening, the truth, mm -hmm. their role in continuing to support Israel and Israel's massacre of the Palestinians, to try and move the conversation, move the debate, move the truth into this uh, completely false mm. um, setup that they're, that they're putting onto the Palestine protesters. And I think what's really important is, yes, yeah, that we recognize that this, this comes from a position of weakness, but also just how cynical it is. Mm. I mean, they, they throw this accusation of, of anti-Semitism out um, and, and in so doing weaponize it, they play around with the issue of anti-Semitism. And first of all, we should say that the, the, there's a well-documented history mm. of anti-Semitism in the Tory party that anyone can look at. And there's, a, there's an article on, on our website about that. But they use it as, as political political football in a real cynical way. Mm. Um, and it's totally, it's totally false. We are entirely opposed to anti-Semitism. What is anti-Semitism? The hatred of Jews. And that's an abomination mm. that we are entirely opposed for. And they cannot conflate um, what we're doing and, and what anti-Zionism is with, with anti-Semitism. And, and every single time they do this, actually it works less and less, I would mm -hmm. say. These are just, these are just smears to try and um, 
they're also trying to scare people. Mm -hmm. I think we should be honest about the fact that, look, they've used this before. They use this as, a, as an attack against the Palestine movement as a whole, but also the left as a whole. Mm. Jeremy Corbyn, for example. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, in the past, I would say that often people have felt trapped by that accusation mm -hmm. and made the mistake of apologizing for it when it doesn't exist. And, and that has damaged the movement. And actually, we could say that really destroyed Corbyn in a lot of ways um, and, and his supporters, the way that they were unable to stand up to that. And, and we don't need to be scared of, of, these, of these smears and these accusations because we know the truth of what is happening um, and we know and we have the truth on our side and, 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 and it's shared widely, I would say, throughout most young people and, and workers. They have, they have no interest in what Gove or any other Tory has to say about, about racism, mm. um, especially these people have been demonizing migrants and asylum seekers um, a lot in the last year, but also the whole of the track record of the Tories is this. And so it just doesn't wash with people mm -hmm. anymore. And and so, yeah, when, when I saw that speech, I just thought, God, they're really scared. Mm -hmm. They're really scared of what is taking place right now because they can see the potential and they can see that it's morphing beyond just the question mm, of Palestine. Definitely. Um, but also about what these people really represent. Yeah, for sure. And as you say, it's not just an attack on our party in particular, it's an attack upon the entire Palestine movement. And also, yeah, the right, the right to protest. De these democratic rights that have been clamped down upon, I think, time and time again over the past few years. You've mm. had the, the, um, the police courts uh, and sentencing act. There's another word in there that I've forgotten. The police courts crime sentencing act, you know, the yeah. one I'm referring yeah. to, yeah. Uh, which again restricts the, the right to protest. You've got the Public Order Act as well, uh, the Minimum Service Level Act, which um, you know, is, is restricting the ability of trade unions to go on strike and so forth. So what you can see is a, a, you know, uh, a series of attempts to, yeah, to, to clamp down upon the right to, to protest, to strike and so on, because the ruling class are scared that big explosive movements are on the horizon. Uh, you know, the likes of which I think we've already seen a glimpse of in, in the United States uh, and, and Canada and so on. Those events are coming uh, here in, in Britain as well. But I want to ask you, why do you think, you know, this is happening particularly now? Because it could have had, this, this statement could have been made at any point over the past few uh, weeks or months. But why, why particularly this week do you think Gove chose to make this statement? Yeah, well, it's definitely related to the um, announcement from the prosecutor of the ICC that they're going to seek an arrest warrant, or they're going to apply, rather, I should say, uh, for an arrest warrant for Netanyahu and, and Gallant, the Israeli defense minister. And this has kind of shaken things a bit on uh, the world stage. Biden's come out and said it's outrageous. I think Rishi Sunak said it was unhelpful. <laughs> um, and they're... What they're worried about is the fact that they're, they, they feel like they're losing any sense of um, moral authority, I mm -hmm. suppose you could say, on the world stage. I mean, for us, it's been clear these people have no moral authority. Mm -hmm. But once that feeling seeps deeper into the consciousness of, of, of ordinary people, their whole faith or understanding that the government is there to protect us and that its involvement in international affairs is to do with the rules-based order and international is something that America obviously promotes a lot, ideas of democracy and freedom. Mm. Oh, Israel's the only democracy in the Middle East and mm. that's why we have to ally, us, ally ourselves with her. That is being completely shattered. I will say it's been shattered by the real events of what Israel is doing and the fact that people are aware of that. Um, it's not just because of what the ICC has now done, but this action from the ICC is just a, an extra part in this mm. whole saga of mm. events that makes it much harder for the Tories to maintain any sense of uh, propriety or, or whatever it is mm -hmm. that they want, and and so I think they're worried about that um, mm -hmm. because it's it's giving it will give a boost mm -hmm. to the Palestine movement. But what's important from our perspective is that we don't you know put any illusions mm -hmm. in the ICC or these sorts of institutions. Okay, great that this has come out, but you know we have to have faith in ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. The ICC is not what will be able to liberate Palestine. Mm -hmm. And it's not, um, 
the what we should focus all of our attention on yeah. in my opinion yeah exactly because who is going to carry out this arrest warrant yeah you, know, you got israel back to the hilt by american imperialism which is the most powerful and, and reactionary imperialist power on the planet so you got the support of british imperialism various imperialist powers across europe yeah so really this arrest warrant it's not really worth the paper it's written on but i think as you say it reveals i think um yeah that the the the, the um the strategists of capital, if you will, can see the mood in society and they're very careful not to inflame it any further. They almost feel pressured mm. um, to make these decisions. I think this is the first time that the ICC has ever uh, issued an arrest warrant against uh, the leader of a country that is mm. backed by American imperialism. I think that's yeah. quite significant. All of these international institutions, which have, you know, for a long period have, uh, you know, been able to to act, uh, you know, in, in a way that's harmonious with the interests of American imperialism. Now that the world is sort of, um, you know, becoming more conflict ridden, all of these different trade wars opening up, different yeah. imperialist blocks, uh, yeah. kind of, um, you know, coming into alignment, you can see that this whole thing is kind of, uh, yeah, becoming quite shaky. Yeah. You know, would you say? Uh, yeah. And um, yeah. We've also got an article actually that's on Marxist.com and our website communist.red uh, by Alan Woods, which looks into a, in a bit more detail at this uh, request for an arrest, arrest warrant. So if listeners and, and viewers want to take a read of that, uh, yeah, the link will be in the show notes of this podcast. Now I want to move on to something else. Um, so yeah, we've been talking about the Palestine encampments quite a lot recently. Uh, and we're hosting a national meeting uh, on Thursday, so tomorrow at 6.30, uh, to discuss what way forward for the movement. I think its uh, title is Bring Down the War Criminals, uh, build, the, build the Movement. And you're going to be speaking there, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And what, you know, what is it going to be about? Why are we putting this on and why should people come along? I think that what's really important in all of these encampments is one, that there's some sort of national coordination between them um, because that will give the movement strength, but also that we recognize, okay, this is a, a great thing that has already started, but we don't want it to dissipate. We don't want it to dissipate over mm -hmm. the summer. We need to use what is happening, like you know the response from Gove and after the ICC announcement. We've got to use every single thing we can as a lever to take the movement to the next level. And that will involve um, getting more people into uh, the encampments, but just into what we're trying to do in general, right? And so the purpose of the meeting is to lay out firstly politically what's happening right now um, in Palestine but also in, in Britain and how we can form the arguments and make the plans to get as many workers I would say on board mm. with what's taking place because that is what will ultimately determine how much we can do in Britain to stop our country um, being involved in, in the Israeli state mm -hmm. and, and what's happening. And, and that's ultimately what we've got to focus on, right? Our main enemy is at home. Our main enemy is our own war criminals. The main enemy of American students um, is Biden, their war criminals. And the same is true all over. And because also we should say that these encampments are taking place all over the world. Like it's not just in America or Britain, but Loads of places, mm. loads of countries across Europe, um, and 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 beyond that also. Yeah, over 170 different encampments I've heard somewhere. Yeah, okay, as far yeah. afield as Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Yeah. yeah. So th there's something you know quite fundamental taking place um, all over the world, and and the significance of that international feeling is also a reflection of the fact that, as I say that, or as I said earlier, it is about Palestine, but it's about, um, I think. How should I say this? Every single student that is taking place in encampment today recognizes that the people in government who are facilitating what Israel is doing are the same people attacking them and their living standards, right? Mm. Michael Gove comes out and accuses us of anti-Semitism and accuses us all this. And Michael Gove is the same person, as you said earlier, is hated by teachers in this country mm. because he tried to decimate the education sector. That is what is significant all over the world. People mm. are connecting the dots between these war criminals and the system they represent. And, and that's why it's also important for us to link up on an international scale, which of course, that's what we're trying to do um, as the Revolution Communist Party. We are part of, a, of an international, which is having, it's having a, a founding Congress uh, in just a couple of weeks in June, the 10th of June, to relaunch essentially Lenin's international mm. um, 
because we think that we need to build an international movement, gather as many revolutionaries, as many young people as possible, looking to the ideas of communism and organize them in, into a world party mm -hmm. effectively to take, because look, we're internationalists, you know, we we know that capitalism is an international system mm -hmm. and, and we need an international response to that. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a, yeah, a very excellent response. So yeah, there's two things that our viewers and listeners can do at home then on the back of what you've just said. So first of all, you can register for this national meeting taking place uh, tomorrow at 6.30. The link will be in the show notes. Uh, and as well as that, if you're in an encampment right now, you should set up a watch party for this uh, for this meeting so we can spread these lessons and have this discussion as widely as possible about how to take this movement forward, how to involve the working class and yeah, how to set our sights on bringing down these uh, these war criminals. So yeah, as I said, the, the link to register will be in the show notes. And secondly, yeah, this upcoming founding conference for the Revolutionary Communist International starting on the 10th of June. Uh, yeah, you can register for that as well. Uh, there'll be an online stream uh, uh, around which, again, you should uh, consider organizing a watch party with your friends, your comrades, uh, anyone who wants to get involved in the fight for communism internationally. So once again, if you want to register for that, the website is schoolofcommunism.com or the link will be in the show notes. So I think that brings us to the end of today's episode, but I'm sure we'll have you back on the podcast very soon because the situation is moving very quickly. I would say, who knows what tomorrow might bring? Maybe the prime minister will come out and, uh, <laughs> and attack us or something like We're that. We're ready and, for yeah, it. Bring I would welcome it on. that, you know, all publicity <laughs> is good publicity. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for joining us, uh, Fiona. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, make sure that you stay subscribed to the Marxist Voice podcast for future episodes covering Marxist theory, revolutionary history, current events uh, and party building brought to you by the Revolutionary Communist Party.